<laughs> Ten minutes ago. Hello, you welcome to another edition of Grand Sinners Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, the professor, Russ Stevens, Uncle Joe McLaughlin, and he's the barber to the stars, Hollywood Pete McGilvery. Well, we have another great show for you tonight. So, boys, let's get started. First of all, co- uh, of course, we have to thank our wonderful sponsor, Dante's Pizzeria, 415 Harvard Street in Brookline, Mass. Delicious and if there was again. ever a time to order pizza tonight, and, tonight. and cuddle on up uh, for that rainstorm yeah. <laughs> that we're getting, because we're not getting snow. That's my prediction. It's 37 degrees. Yeah, that, 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 that will, I thought you got out of the prediction. No. That will, yeah, that, that, will go into, that will go into the same barrel with the rest of your predictions, no, It doesn't my friend. snow at 37 yeah, degrees. My Mathurin yeah, education yeah, Jason tells me. Jason Baratek is not the next manager of the yeah, Boston Red Sox. He Red should be the next yeah, manager. David right. Price wasn't traded by the devil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, guys, you got to remember everything. No, I just want to mention one thing. I have never brought this up is that I predicted that the uh, Philadelphia Eagles would beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl during the season. That is true. We did a Super Bowl. No, no, no. I know, but I obviously changed. But I predicted during the season that the Eagles would beat the Patriots. Look, I just, I don't, we need time to get I guess, this video. I guess, it's absolutely true. I guess none no of us heard that video. It's absolutely a uh, hundred buck bet. I, I defy Todd to find that video. I, I did that. I just wanted to. That out of the <laughs> no, no, if you're going to start ripping on me like that, <laughs> look, I'm just telling you, I'm on everything. It's going to rain tonight. Everyone's fine. Just putting out their shovels. All right, so uh, <laughs> starting pitching has gone south, and clearly the show is already too. All we have is Chris Sale and David Price, and everyone else is a question mark. Porcello is a question mark. Would you give me that? Wait, how many games did they play? No, but <laughs> is Porcello a question mark? Oh, honest to God, how many games? <laughs> they no, they've <laughs> gone south, Pete. Yeah. We're moved. Wait, look, they have gone yeah, south already. They, they you can't get any yet. further south Pomerantz, than Florida. Pomerantz is already hurt with his forearm issue again, right? The, He's been the most spot. consistent pitcher the last couple of years. And, and but injury with these, prone. With, yeah, but for a week or two he, at a time. But you, you don't have concerns about him injury-wise? Yeah, especially towards the end of the year, but not so much at the beginning. Porcello is definitely not a lock to be a quality pitcher this year. Not Cy Young, no. Look, every one of these guys, every pitcher could get could get injured, right? I mean, the only guy that we uh, on the staff at this point in time, I guess Sale and Porcello feel like they're pretty durable pitchers. Innings um, wise, sure. Innings wise, yeah. Look, I, I I don't know if I would say they've gone south, but they're thin. They're really thin. They don't have any depth in the organization right. if you have problems. Yeah. We're going to see – that's always our concern was that we're going to see the Henry Owens of the world who's no longer in, in baseball. Well, well, but the Brian happened? Johnsons, the Velasquez, we were going to see them get a lot of starts early and maybe against the Yankees. Whatever happened to Brandon Workman ever since he got hurt? He's never well, started no, he's another a reliever. One. Yeah, no, he's not, they're not starting him anymore. Yeah, that's a, a great a point, though. You know, you'd think that you would stretch him yeah. out um, – because he was effective, well, three years ago when, before yeah, he got I hurt. Liked him. He was pretty tough. Look, I think they're babying these guys. They're going to yes, just baby I these agree. guys. They're going to baby them and baby them and baby them and try to get, get them healthy for the stretch run, which I don't have a problem with. Right. right? I mean, if, if, if they had to, if, 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 if the manager was managing for his job, you could bet that Erod would be pitching right now. Right. But right? can you see a situation early on and maybe later in – you know, spring training, that if the Red Sox feel like even another guy, a Porcello or, um, you know, Pomerantz, won't be able to, you know, the first half of the season be effective, that they could go out and maybe trade Jackie Bradley for a second or third starter. A second or third starter, yeah, I'd but could jump you, for that. Could you get a second, could you get a third starter at the very least for Jackie Bradley? No. So. Could you get a third starter for Jackie Bradley? I bet you if you package something with him, you yeah. could get a third starter. Yeah. Because there was a lot of teams I mean, that like him a it's a legitimate question. Would you trade Jackie Bradley for a legitimate third starter? You're talking about a guy who's going to win 14 games yeah. and pitch 200 innings. Would you do that tomorrow? You'll have to see where you That are kind of guy is pretty rare. Year. I would not. Yeah. Well, I would having wait. signed J.D. Martinez and having him, I get, he can play right field. He may not play it wonderfully, but – this gives you more flexibility in the outfield, right? Yeah. And he is your fourth look, outfield. Look, he I, just goes into I think center. you're looking at a trade deadline kind of thing. Like, I think they're going to give these guys a chance to, to get healthy, Erod particularly, see if Pomeranz. If Erod's healthy and Pomeranz really does only miss a spot, um, then you've got five pitchers. 
But we love Jackie Bradley, right? We love him. We wish him well. But this is a big season for him because whether he ends up being a 15 to $20 million guy moving forward or ends up being a fourth outfielder somewhere. I like Jackie Bradley a lot. But, you know, my the Red Sox MO is not to baby pitchers, it seems like. They croaked that kid last year. And um, to Sawa the, the year before that. Yeah. Was it Sawa? Yeah. About, I mean, they, for about three years straight, they, they murdered him. that kid. Yeah, they really did. It's a great point. But this is a new administration. And I think they're now saying, we can't do that anymore. These guys were just trashed by the playoffs oh, last yeah, year. Oh, yeah. They got nothing left. Sale was that a shell of himself. you don't like last year. Who's that kid? Oh, uh, Matt Barnes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't believe that Matt Barnes, <laughs> Brock Holt, and Stephen Wright may be on the same team. This is my worst nightmare. That's three out of the 25 Speaking spots. Speaking of Brock Holt, I mean, this, this is actually, award. This is right, actually a legitimate Holt. conversation is, would you keep Swihart over Holt? this year oh absolutely i think i would why is that well first of all because brock holt cannot play any position well he's He's a 200 here no even if even if we like brock holt just a little bit but (laughs) nunez can play the infield but swihart can is your third catcher and that gives you huge amount of flex he hasn't caught in five years we're talking about he he caught last year for the red sox (laughs) come on he oh. dropped every other ball, but he caught. It was a problem. He was a he was a project at I, best. Look, did Brock Holt give like a family member a kidney or something? Why do you love him so much? <laughs> Seriously, no, no. Was, I, it really wasn't Vertigo. It was he was donating to someone in your family some internal organ. No. All right. Then why do you love him so because much? Because he no, dated I, a girl, looked like Brock Holt yeah, once. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. He said yeah, this right. last year, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you can't get it over with. It's got to do with Her that. name was Brenda. Still carrying a torch. <laughs> no, I'm comparing him to Blake Swihart. That's all. And who's had a great spring training? Uh, look, that's got to mean something. He right? always has so a great spring training, though. Days. No, but that has to mean something. I, I like Jackie that. Bradley had some great spring training. Well, too. look, but your point, and Brock Holt has at least been in the majors for three years. But Blake Swihart, as much as I like him, you can't compare him because he hasn't even been around. Yeah, but you never know when Vertigo might pop up, right? Or <laughs> something like. But you, you so that you means Blake, Blake that you're going to keep get hurt? that you're going to keep Brock Holt on the team and cut Swihart. You're gonna trade you're gonna Swihart. Have to do if you don't, if you keep Holt, you're Swihart's Swihart. definitely out of options. Who has more value well, at this point, Swihart or Holt? But you, I, I would assume you. Oh, Swihart has more more value than more Holt trade has. value Absolutely. for sure. He's a catcher. Yeah, but you're not gonna get anything for him. Get, uh, just get rid of Brock Holt. Can we can we stop defending guys who bat 130? <laughs> can we just can we make a pack right now that will stop defending really bad players like Alexander Bogarts? <laughs> right. Well, he, <laughs> in the he, second half of last year. Well, Joe's got. The, Bro, uh, Brock Holt playing shortstop in May if, if he's Xander goes down. Guy. He's a super That's utility player. Well, I thought Eduardo Nunez was going to be that guy. Brock Holt Look. is the worst outfielder to have ever played, and I'm including Brian Daubach in yeah. this. He is the worst base runner <laughs> to have ever run a base in the Major League Baseball. More than Hanley Ramirez? And at the very <laughs> least, the one of the worst hitters of all time. But, thank but God. you're going to make sure Brock has a long career at Boston Red Sox, you big yahoos. God, he's a dirt dog. I had him the last three years because he was a plug-and-play guy. He was. I thank God Wait, for a lot base, of things, first none base. of which is, has Brock no, Holt involved in it. But you have to admit, without him, you would have been in trouble. <laughs> Not last year. He didn't play much. That's at all. the same philosophy of like knuckleball pitchers. He ate up a lot of innings. Yeah. Oh, he did it poorly, yeah. but he ate up a lot of innings. Uh, he took it for the team. <laughs> What's up? A handsome Todd. Make sure that we have a handsome Todd sighting. I thought it was the. Yola. What the hell was that? He's yeah. kind of like Vera. Oh, wait, what was in Norman uh, Cheers? Oh the, yeah, the right. Vera. 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 Yeah, Vera, we, the white. So you never really saw. Okay, her. are we finished? <laughs> <laughs> are we finished now with Brock Holt? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> Until next for week. now. Yeah. All right. Just so you know, I'm going to be the first one to say that the new pitching, new batting coach, Tim Hires, he needs to go. Because <laughs> you know, if the season goes bad early. We love our players so much, and of course, we we would never blame Someone's guys like have Brock Holt. It has to be sacrificed early, and Tim Hires just seems like the guy, right? Yeah, well, he could better be than Chili Davis. Go. No, I'm, yeah, but will we blame Chili Davis? I actually am. You know, I, I honestly, all joking aside, I, I am excited to see if if be if they actually end up being more aggressive and if it makes a difference. Because if anything, at least the games will be shorter with the Red Sox. Because yeah, they're right. not going to be constantly at three, three and two and three Between and one. Between Xander Bogarts, Mookie Betts was actually the worst. Swing the Dustin Pedroia bat. sitting there and taking yeah. called first strikes. And even Benintendi was in the top 25. Yeah. 
In the, all, of, all of Major League if, Baseball. If, if Tim Heyer does nothing else other than to get them to swing the bat early <laughs> right. in the count, he'll be our favorite coach. By the <laughs> way, right. he'll be our favorite coach. Red Sox yeah, in midway through the season. If we're right. going to games that's that are like two a, hours and 50 minutes because yeah. of Tim Heyer's in the yeah. new aggressive attitude, Get the bat off your shoulder. That's Look, a little league tactic: don't swing until you get a strike. On yeah, <laughs> but right. when you you're, you're facing guys like the tenth guy out of the bullpen against the race, and you're what are you one. waiting for? Swing yeah. the bat. Yeah, uh, no, I agree with you. But well, that may be his signal. <laughs> he just right. goes like exactly. this, and we put the camera on him. All right, so look, it's all. Uh, you know, it's, of course, it's all about Jimmy G. But again, it's <laughs> all about the New York Yankees. Those games, and I know the rivalry has kind of been tempered for a long time. Yeah. But those are the marquee games far and above. And maybe I guess if the Ash, when the Astros come in yeah. town, that'll be. Well, now they got they got star power there with Stanton, Judge, Sanchez. I mean, yeah. they got star power. Should be fun. But but that's really going to overwhelm the season, right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. all you yeah. know. Usually, you know, like I always say, I never care what, you know, what team the Red yeah. Sox play as long as the Red Sox show up. But I really care about seeing yeah. the Yankees yeah. play, right? And they're going to play early in April, which should, I don't know, kickstart yeah, the season, would you say, hopefully guys? Give the the knife. Season. Yeah, hopefully it'll give the season some energy. Yeah, right. Because it needs it, right? Yeah. Sure does. I mean, look, I, well, those are the kind of guys where if I'm watching, if the Yankees are on, you know, Fox or something on a Saturday. I'll I'll sit down and watch Stanton and Judge and Sanchez back to back, back, to, yeah. back to back. Right, and then you've heard this crazy idea that in the ninth inning of games that you'd be able to bat. Oh, any, it'd they, be fun. No, you, you think that's crazy? That so, makes no. Of course, sense. it's yeah, crazy. Explain this to Pete. I don't think All right, so this in the ninth inning, you're able to skip. You'd be able to skip. You can bat whoever you want. So if if they're the seventh, eighth, and ninth batters would up, you could skip those in order and say. The third, fourth, and fifth guys are up, right? Wait, this is a new rule in MLB. No, no, this no, is an idea. That they're, 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 this is your idea. No, 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 no not, not even my idea. By the way, I wish I had thought of it. That, I'm shutting uh, this mic off again. If that, um, if that happens, I'm out. I'm, yeah, I'm out. I'll be like, I'm like the old man. Get off my line. If they yeah. do that, yeah. I am out. Because it out makes on no sense. Sport. Because what happens in the tenth inning? Just stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't understand. So, do they bat again? I, I don't even understand. That it, would make, that, it, it, it would burn out a bullpen. It would stupid. burn out the bullpen. So, the stupid. explanation is that, you know, in other sports, you don't take out your best players at the end of the game. You get to right. use them and you get to see them play. But it, 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 it doesn't make any sense, right? What are you trying to do with it? You know? End the game quickly. To, um, trying to keep your audience, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, you're trying to get more visibility, more participation more from drama. your best players. I get that, but that's just not the game. That's such a fundamental rule change. Yeah. There's so many. I'd rather see the game shorten to seven innings. I, absolutely. Wouldn't you? Like, if you, want, if you want this thing to move along and stuff, shorten the game to seven innings. Do three balls and two strikes in, in your walk or you're out. I, do that stuff. Don't give me, like. Seventh inning is what they should do. And as a little league parent, as a guy who's seen a lot of games in high school and stuff, nobody ever complains and goes, oh, I wish we had an eighth inning. <laughs> right. right. No, everyone's <laughs> very happy with seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. And six would be wow. good, too. And, so the, record book, right. and yeah. the record book has been all fouled up anyway, so that's not an issue. It's just yeah. the Players Association is not going to want seven innings because you're going to they'll Less drop the drops. rosters. Yeah. And Best two else. words in a, as a little league par parent to hear? Mercy rule. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. It's a mercy yeah. rule for everyone. Yes, the millennials will knock it down to four. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Exactly. All right, so boys, we're going to go to the Celtics. And I have this great comparison with Marcus Smart because we can't go a show without mentioning Marcus yeah. Smart and Brad Marchand. Now, Brad Marchand was kind of like Marcus Smart when his contract came up. It was whether are you willing to invest in a guy who's a troublemaker but who has loads of talent, mm -hmm. okay? Bruins decided to invest in Marshawn, mm -hmm. and it's paid off big time. He's, it ever. he's a superstar in the league. Yeah, five years ago, he was just a, a defensive gadfly, yeah. occasionally chipping a goal or two for you. Now he's an MVP candidate, all yeah, of them. But the fundamental difference between those two guys in your comparison is Marshawn has become a scorer. Right. Yes. Yeah. And right. Marcus Smart. I don't think that's in the cards. Okay, so that's what the decision the Celtics but will have to make, right? But it look like Marchand would ever be a scorer, say, five, six years ago. Right. You're right. He, has, he was a role guy. Yeah. But he, 
And I think that's why he got the money because they saw that he worked hard on his game, yeah. he worked hard in the weight room, yeah. and he they saw things that other people yeah. really just didn't see. I so. think it's harder to become a good shooter when you get to be 24 years old, turning yourself into like Jason Kidd did. It, a handful of guys have yeah. done it in yeah. the history. Magic, of the game. Is, had an magic. Game. I mean, I'm not Spark saying it's impossible. A good passer. That would right. Be a good thing, Stop the know. turnovers. But is that the question the Celtics will have to ask themselves yeah. in the negotiation of with Marcus? Yeah, Hart? he brings a certain tool set to the to the game. You know, that's obviously valued by but, the Celtics at, at the very least. But I think someone else is going to value him more than the Celtics are going to be able to so yeah. give him. So he'll get the money, you think? Yes. So he'll get paid. And he'll and he go won't for the be money. on the Celtics. Right. It's remarkable. Only Marcus Smart could be on the court with Kyrie Irving. Horford, and he thinks he's the number he's one the offensive of option. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, good, they've passed me the yeah. ball. It must yeah. be they want yeah. to it shoot. It's going to be fascinating, Joe, to see if you're right. I, I don't know. I think it's I, – I would put him back on the Celtics a little bit more than I would have mm-hmm. him – yeah, see him go, but we'll see. I, I think Brad Stevens loves him. Despite, oh I yeah, think, yeah I think he's. I just think that, the, the the Celtics love him too. Your it's point just is, that, someone else going to offer him something. Yeah, they someone right. they've been offering. You saw Kelly Olynyk got like what twelve million yeah, a year. That's a good point. He's going to get more I above miss that. Kelly Olynyk. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing I miss about Kelly Olynyk <laughs> at all. Even though he torched us when he played yeah. the game he played against yeah. us in the Garden, which was ridiculous. All right, so Pablo Sandoval never met a piece of cake that he didn't like. Right? Where's and this going? Marcus Morris never met a shot. He did like, yeah. wow! All the, <laughs> because we have to have a Pablo. Oh my God, that is reference. so disgusting. That makes me not want to eat hamburger ever mm-hmm. again. I don't even know why. Just absolutely disgusting. All right, Marcus Morris That's just shoots Bignatis. every time he gets yeah. the ball. He he has the green light and he is not afraid to use it. No, right? And oh. have you ever seen a big guy like him? The third, the three pointers. I mean, he's yeah. he's quite comfortable shooting. Yeah. Yes, he is. Do you cringe every time he shoots or are you comfortable with No, he's with been it? actually he's been very good the last few weeks. So he's a guy in the yeah. second unit when we talk about a shooter. Well, How he, many te- he tell you, why do you need a shooter? I'm here. Right. What's yep. the other kid's name? Abdelway or something? Uh, Abdel, Abdel Nader? Yep. He, no, 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 no. He stinks. He, he, I haven't seen him hit a shot this year. Abdul Nader? Yeah. Yeah, he's not hit a shot. He's the worst. He's the Brock Holt of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Everything really you comes about. This is great how you can tie it all. Tie it in. And then I had him. Marcus Smart is the Jimmy back. G of the NBA. <laughs> yes, he is. All right, so boys, I think it's time to rest our starters of the Celtics. It's We're kind of <laughs> – do we really need to amp it up and risk injury and fatigue – to try to get that number one spot when it really is a crapshoot. Who we're, you know, we're going to end up playing the Phillies, or the Milwaukee's, or the Miami's. Or the Horford Wolves. could definitely use a rest. Yeah. He, is, he hasn't it's looked a, good in a it's while. It's a great question because if you think that, um, that Cleveland could fall into the fourth spot, you actually don't want to be number one. And right. That's real. Right. That's real. Yeah. And they are one game out of the fourth spot. If you think Cleveland's going to be the, in the third spot, you want to try to get the number one. There's, there's, there's a lot of jockeying that's, that's going on. In a perfect world, Cleveland lose a couple games, and this thing would start to look like they're in the fourth spot, and then Toronto would have to deal with them. But I would think that Cleveland, as the season go, you know, begins to end, that they're going to give LeBron a lot of time yeah. off. They're going to give Love a lot of Cleveland's time off. So they're not going to go on a huge yeah, streak Cleveland's, at the end. Cleveland's history has been to not care about their playoff season. Well, now yeah. Love's got to go to a shrink. Having panic attacks. Oh, is that right? Yeah. During the game, he had one. It's unbelievable. It really, it's unbelievable that that's a guy I love that we wanted, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that we ended up with Kyrie, and they ended up with Isaiah, and he's already off yeah. Yeah. the team. But yeah, look, we're three games out in the last column uh, with Toronto. That's right. It's Tough no to reason to that. try to push the accelerator right yeah. now because I think Kyrie and his knee is Kyrie's definitely knee, yeah. a problem. The only caveat I'd have is they play. we play Toronto twice more, and if we were to win those two games, you could imagine closing the gap. Other than that, we, we can't catch them. Yeah. It's only 19, 17 games left. And you're in good shape if you only have to play either Toronto or, one of or the two. Cleveland yeah, in, one of the in, two. to get to yeah. the finals, right? Yeah. Playing both of those teams, well, that'd be awful tough. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so boys, um, we're gonna go to the Patriots, and just so you know, you know, I don't know if you remember this guy, Matt Patricia, he was the defensive yeah. coordinator. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up, uh, if Al Michaels was correct, uh, being the coach of the Detroit Pistons, mm-hmm. but um, he's a, a coach of Detroit Lions. So 
the Patriots have announced they are not going to have a defensive coordinator anymore. How bizarre a move is that? It's Did not bizarre. They, they've yeah. done this over and they over They did again. that with Patricia. They did it with Josh. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's his way of doing business. Is it, way, to is it his way of taking control more of the team? No, he's, I think it's just you have to earn your stripes with Belichick. Yeah, that and he doesn't want you in front of the presses. No, no press conference. Only coordinators have to do that weekly press conference. I'd imagine they're saving a little dough too. Much, was he? No, no, but also talk the rumor week. was that Brian Flores, what he, the linebacking coach, mm-hmm. was going to become the next in line and be the defensive yeah, coordinator. Yeah, he was supposed to be. He was interviewing for head coach. He's playing. He's right. he's calling the defense. He's uh, everything but name. He's the defensive coordinator. Right. Everything but name. Yeah. Right. And he was be, uh, like he went to Arizona. He interviewed with Arizona yeah. for the head coach. Yeah. He's the de facto guy. Yeah. All right. I think it's weird. I just think it's Bill Belichick wanting to have more control of the team and more t- airtime uh, on the sidelines. They're going to be saying, talking about Bill more when they're not you supposed think to. He cares about that? I think he cares about I all that stuff. I don't think he gives Absolutely. a crap about that. Patricia was kind, got to be kind of a star there with the beard. And yeah. The I think, I, I think look, Bill was, needs to continue to try to gain – keep control of this team and I think airtime is very important to Bill right now things are changing at in, in Patriots way so alright you know how much I love Jimmy G and we have to say Jimmy G at least five times on the show it's oh required by FCC uh, and so I'm here boys to make the Jimmy G trade palpable I'm here to say it can go away in my mind and on this show we'll only mention him three times if the Patriots make one move and that is to draft in the position that they have, the 45th pick. That's how they got for Jimmy G. Shaq Griffin. Shaq Griffin is the story of the NFL draft. Shaq Griffin does not have a left hand, right? Yeah. Shaq Griffin right, ran the 40, fastest, the fastest, fastest, 40. fastest 40 of all time. Yep. For a linebacker. For linebacker. Yeah. The same time uh, as Julio Jones. Faster than Julio Jones. Faster than Julio Jones. His weightlifting all off the charts. Oh, yeah. He thought he was going to shoot for maybe six. He got 20. But is this not a great story? And it's if a great the, story. If, oh, yeah. If the Patriots were to acquire him in that spot and he ended up to be a star, wouldn't that, <clears> make, wouldn't that lighten the load on the Jimmy G move? What if he doesn't become Wait, a star? But why does the Jimmy G move have to be liked at all? Mm. What are you talking about? Everything it's, comes back to Jimmy G. Because it's the albatross. It's the scarlet letter. It hangs around all of our necks for the that 10 rest. move. For, for who? To get rid of Jimmy for G. Jimmy. Oh, they've got to be kidding. You don't go to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G here. What's, <laughs> why? Because Tom was happy. Oh. That's all <laughs> And now it's, it, it, uh, the cap hit would have only been $23 million. Which wait, wait, wait. Only $23 only million? 20, million? They could have handled that. Oh, and it went up. And the cap went up $10 million this year, too. So yeah, $10 million See, there you go. Top. So now it's only $13 million compared No, to- that's not true. Mm-hmm. It's, it's actually uh, not true. Okay. The cap hit was $23 million. Here's my million. question. Would Shaq Griffin... Be a nice PR yes. move. It'd be a to great, also be a great he's, PR he's move, but athlete, whether it's a good he's football a great athlete. move. No, but I'm saying if he ended up being a star, that, that would be great. Uh, that I'd would, rather a good football move than a good PR well, move. Well, he's a good football player. He is a good football yeah. move. And it's a remarkable story. I mean, I think it's unbelievable. Well, it would be a great move if they didn't attach the Jimmy G no, Albatross. It, look, it's not they. Scarlet it's letter. Me. <laughs> it's the scarlet letter. They, you like that? <laughs> Jay. <laughs> it's only grew up on the North Shore. You know. <laughs> yeah, is that right? All right, so um, Mar- this is in from the Grand Sooners Live desk. Martellus Bennett has been cut by the New mm-hmm. England Patriots, and we had a chance to acquire his brother, Michael Bennett, today, but we didn't pony up enough picks because we probably— I think they got him for a fifth-round pick. A fifth-round pick. Which is more than Ziva. what we paid for Cassie Marsh. Marsh, right? That's we right. gave what, a, Philly. a fourth and— I yeah, Rich for, uh, that stiff Dwayne Allen. Dwayne Allen. Yeah, yeah. right. So why did the Patriots, because Michael Bennett would look really good in a Patriots uniform, why did they uh, give more to get him? Might be the salary. I'm oh, assuming I'm it's a salary. I'm assuming it's a price tag. This. Right? Yeah, you I mean, it's so? not just the draft pick. You have to assume the price tag. Yeah. I mean, I think Philly's now like $20 million over the cap or something That's why like they're that. trying to get rid of Brandon Cooks is because now he's on the last – Cheap yeah, I, are they trying to get? I've heard that. I, I I've heard people say they yeah, should I get rid of. Them. I don't see them. I don't see them trying, trying to, get to get rid of Brandon Cooks. Cooks. Yeah, well, they did pick up the option on Kenny Britt. Yeah, I know, but that there's no I don't decision think making related, when it comes to Brandon yeah. Cooks. He cost them a first round pick, Joe. They're not giving him up. Um, so 
the professor. If they get something in return. The professor has a great theory about our 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 future starting quarterback because he can feel my Jimmy G pain and yeah. he wants to ease it. Yeah. So tell him, professor. Look, I think that uh, if you could buy reasonably low, it would be worth the risk to try to sign Teddy Bridgewater and bring him in. And he's the kind of guy who he's the kind of guy who throws very accurate, uh, very smart kid. Got a good personality. He's only 25 years old. Very you, mobile. You take him, you sign yeah. him for you know low, and still draft a quarterback and give yourself two bites at the apple at the heir apparent. Does he see on that injury? He has pretty. He's bad. bad. I mean, he played yeah. last year. I mean, well, it was a bad passed. injury. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he, no, he played. He got. Well, what if they game. get? If they get Cousins, he's expendable, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if Minnesota yeah. gets Cousins, they'll they'll let Bridgewater walk. He just feels like the kind of guy who could work well in the Patriot system. Is my point. And you give yourself two bites at the apple for the quarterback of the future, because then you go still pick one of these guys like and maybe one will work out. Yeah, in the mid range, twenty five years old. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a it's a great I mean, idea. If his knee is right, because Pete's that. right, it, it's it was a significant, scary knee injury. But if his knee is right, you could come back. He could play ten years in the NFL. Yeah, obviously he ran a lot, you know, early in his career. Yeah, but he wasn't like he wasn't like a, he wasn't like a Michael Vick guy. Yeah. But yeah, he was mobile. Right. He's six two, about two twenty. He's a little yeah. smaller than they want, but. A lot of these guys are now. He's a bridge guy for sure. Yeah. Yeah, right. For sure. So that would be interesting. I would love no to see something like that. <laughs> but it yeah, well, that's a great move. And it wouldn't cost a whole lot either in the acquisition or in the, that's right. in the salary yeah. cap going yeah. forward. And yeah. I will say right here on the show that he will have a better year if he does that mm -hmm. than Jimmy. <laughs> 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 All right, that's a hard take if Todd can do that. All right. Nobody's be going to have a better year boy. than Jimmy G. I'll the, tell you who's going to have a better year than Jimmy G. Who's that? TB12. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make the prediction right now so you guys cannot oh, be surprised. Man, man. Take. The Super Bowl for 2019 will be the San Francisco oh, 49ers versus the New England Patriots. Yeah, and I'm sure oh, Todd I mean, will conveniently so lose this tape. No, no. Todd's going to conveniently lose this tape. Francisco 49ers game. versus the New England Patriots. You have done you lost put, your mind, my friend. <laughs> done oh, lost your mind. You've got to be kidding me. No, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. They have no depth at all. They have a better defense than the Patriots do. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, thank you. They have a better. The Patriots, arguably, at the end of the season, had the worst defense in football. I am exhausted, I am exhausted football. by well, this well, whole Jimmy conversation. Well, the San Francisco defense really put Jimmy G in good position to win those games. He really. Pete, we're talking about Jimmy G. Look, sure if the San Francisco March. 49ers were the Patriots yes. and, and they had won the last six games, how excited would we be about the up and coming season? We're not, not as excited as the fact that we've won. I just Super wanted Bowl to win again. the last game. <laughs> we've been in three of the last four yeah. Super Bowls. That it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's yeah. about now, kids. Jimmy G finished in last place. And we lost that Super Bowl. <laughs> it's we are going to make you predict. When we go into the season, who's going to have a better year, Tom Brady or Jimmy G? Okay. And you are going to have to put some cold, hard cash All right. on the and line. Not, not modeling All right. <laughs> Okay, you that's fine. The, do you think the Patriots would have won the Super Bowl if Jimmy G was the quarterback? No, oh, no, no, obviously no. not. No, but obviously. I mean, obviously but yeah, no, but I, I tell you something. They would have won the Super Bowl had they traded Jimmy G and got a defensive piece that could have helped them that might any be defensive piece. Yeah. That was ridiculous that if you were going to trade Front Jimmy seven, G, back four, you eight, could have got a good defensive player. 49ers would have given you the, probably their best defensive player, or whoever that right. was. And so that may have been the biggest mistake. I so the, don't the mistake disagree with you. Was not that. asking for a better player? Well, that, that, yes. that was, that's always been the biggest problem of this is that we didn't get much in return I agree with for that. a guy yeah, that ends up to being the highest paid no, player in football. But, Scott, but at that time, Jimmy G was – not very he played six quarters or something no. right but quarterbacks are so valuable i think they could have got more from yeah absolutely i think not, they could have got not more. A, not a starting defensive player instead oh. of a second round pick you might have been able to do that yeah you could have got a starting defensive player especially from where Browns. san fran was what one in 12 at the yeah. time or yeah something. absolutely right. possible their, their season was pretty much possible. over yeah. you know if you're going to make a, a mid-season deal like that it's got to be something that helps you for this year that's ridiculous who does that so our I know, trade, of an asset yeah, like trade that, deadlines are supposed to help in, you in the tune playoffs in next yeah, week not for, for a future asset that's yeah. it was ludicrous tune in next week for 15 more minutes on jimmy G. It's the Jimmy yeah. G segment. <laughs> right. Yeah. Seriously. All right, we're Brock Holt. Brock Holt have Jimmy a daily G. podcast on Jimmy G. G. Yeah, we have some proper nouns that we use a lot. All right, we're going to go to the Bruins. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I have to give Harvard's own Don Sweeney tons of credit 
for not only the acquisition of Rick Nash, like we talked about, mm -hmm. but the complimentary veterans like Gianta and Holden mm -hmm. that he picked up who are already reaping great rewards mm -hmm. yeah. on the ice as a depth pickup. They've needed every, all three of them. So here's a guy that not only has a great a team that has a great future, he's thought about building a team that can win a Stanley Cup this year. And, and not depending on the young guys. And not giving up too much right. in the process. But not depending no. on the young guys to come through yeah. in the playoffs. Do you think they can win it? I think they do have to depend on the young guys. They still do. To some extent. Yeah. There's a lot of good teams for them to get through. And they don't match up well with Toronto. Tampa's a, a better team than them. There's a lot, a lot of good teams in the East this year. Jeez, Joe's got them out... First round. No, but Seems I, like it does. no, no. I think they'll go go to the second round. They have a really, really good system, and they they're all bought in on it, and that's really important. Well, I think yeah, they're gonna be a tough out. You're gonna have oh, to yeah, beat them the coach four out of seven presses games. Presses the right so buttons. Tuka, you know, he can, right. he can leave the building any time. That's, that's why I'm glad point. they're they're resting him now. Hudobin's playing good enough. They can play Hudobin. Rask can heal up his little always. And be ready to go come playoff time. I feel a lot better about it if McAvoy comes back. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, so I asked you this question, boys. If you had to put money down, who? and I told you one of the teams, the Boston Bruins, the Boston Celtics, will win a world championship this year, yeah. which team would it be, Joe? I'll go with the Celtics. I think uh, in basketball, it's anything can happen if someone, one injury away on almost any team, Takes them out of the picture. All right, Joe gets Celtics rest. Oh, the Bruins, far and away. Yeah, far and away. Yeah. Well, if you listen to there's Vegas, no, there's no team like the Warriors in the NHL. Yeah. Right. right. Tampa's the best team, and the Bruins are only four. But basically, the Bruins are four points behind. Tampa. Nashville's. Nashville's tough. And tough. you could quite possibly play an uh, expansion team <clears throat> in Vegas for They're the tough. cup. Yeah. Yeah. But you could play them for the cup. I mean, I don't think they a, have the depth, though. They, they might get exposed the in Bruins, the playoffs. The Bruins have everything going their way right now. They can overcome these injuries. They got McAvoy's out, but you got Chara. Bergeron's out, you know. Yeah. But you got Marshawn playing like this. So, mm -hmm. I mean, to overcome these things. You so you got the Bruins over the Celtics. I really, I really think I like the Bruins over the Celtics. Vegas has the Bruins as a 7-1 to one sh shot yeah. to win the Stanley Cup. The Celtics are 20, 20 to yeah. 1. Yeah. So you got to listen to the, the Vegas. Golden State factor. Golden State is, is 2 to 3. What yeah, a lousy right. bet that is, huh? 2 to 3 to win the championship. Well, what team do you. I know, obviously, the Stanley Cup team, uh, the Bruins, you know, with the Lucic guys, they won a cup. So it's tough to say this. But what team do you like better, this team or that team? Oh, oh interesting. That team yeah. was fun. But, oh, I did yeah, like that team, Horton. That team was yeah. fun. With Horton, feel, Lucic. Yeah, but I feel oh, like just kept coming up with an overtime winner. Yeah. I think oh yeah, yeah, I mean, look, more energy, more young players. I mean, yeah. it's more, you know. But that team had that team. That was a special team. Oh, that was Tim Thomas. Tim Thomas yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he was just playing out of his Michael head. Michael Ryder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. It's a Michael Ooh. Ryder. I knew you were going to mention yeah. Michael Ryder. All right, boys. Well, that's our show for tonight. I want to thank the boys. I want to thank everyone behind the scenes. Of course the lovely and talented Adrian, Handsome Todd, and William the Intern. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in again next Wednesday night at 6.30 for another edition of The Grandstanders Live. And I'm also mentioning that we now are on BNN TV in Boston yeah. on Fridays at 8 a.m. and at 5 p.m. We're on Lynn TV and on Somerville TV. So it's building, boys. So we have plenty of ways to see us. Well, that's our show for tonight. My name is Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night. Hello, Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night. <laughs> <laughs> The elephants are in town. <laughs> yeah. Here comes the circus. <laughs> <laughs>